Hi everyone! In this video, we'll try to find the answer to the question. Please explain the equivalence partitioning technique. We are going to check ice degree theory and talk in human language after. So let's begin. Let's start with the ice to be explanation. Currently, ice to be is the leading global certification scheme in the field of software testing. And, when we'll talk formally, we'll use their syllabus and the glossary as references. A link to the ISTQB website will be provided in the materials for the video. The equivalence partitioning technique lives here in our schema. The first one of the black box test techniques. Let's check the ISTQB definition of it. If you check the ISTQB glossary, you can find out that the equivalence partitioning is a black box test technique in which test cases are designed to exercise equivalence partitions by using one representative member of each partition. Yes, we know that it sounds very theoretical. We need to get familiar with the theory to understand how to use this in practice. Let's check the ISTQB syllabus how the techniques are explained there. And the syllabus has a lot to say about the equivalence partitioning technique. And you can get familiar with it on your own. The link to it will be provided in the materials for the video. If you read this, most likely it is difficult for you to imagine how to use it in practice. And this is the main purpose of the video, to show the simple example of using the technique. Let's check it. Let's say you work on some specific website with the age restrictions. The user should enter the birth date before they are allowed to see the content. Now you can stop the video and think about how would you test it, how many test cases do you need, and how much time it will take. And we'll use the old-fashioned notepad for this activity. We'll start with the positive scenario. The user is 20 years old and should be able to access the website content. The next scenario is negative. The user is 17 years old and shouldn't be allowed to access the website content. Then you go crazy. You try to put 1000 years old or unborn user, future birth date. But it is a drop down, you can't enter a birth date you can only select one from the defined ranges, so the system blocks you from being crazy. Then you realize that it's not only years but days count as well, so you try the edge case 17 years, 365 days old user. The user isn't allowed to see the website content. And now you are confused, so you start to put values. 0 years and 1 day old user, 0 years and 2 days old user. And you can do it for a very long time. It will be thousands and thousands of scenarios. You simply don't know what to do. But all of them are similar. How to know when testing is enough? When should you stop? If you go with a simple approach to test all possible dates, you'll need weeks to test the simple form. And if the manager asks you how much time it will take, you will answer that you need at least a week or month. They will find another tester. Nobody will give you this amount of time to test this simple feature. So, what you should do instead? First of all, you should recall the testing principle. Exhaustive testing is impossible for any real-sized system. The number of possible test cases is either infinite or close to infinite. We require an infinite amount of time to run an infinite number of tests. We don't have an infinite amount of time. In fact, we are very limited in time. So we must select a subset of test cases from it. And the test techniques are here to help us to select the subset of tests. So let's get familiar with the first of them. The equivalence partitioning technique. Let's check what is hidden behind these theoretical words and learn how to use the technique. There is a set of simple rules to use the technique. Let's go one by one. The first one sounds like this. D 
Divide a set of test conditions into groups or partitions where all elements of the set can be considered the same. So the system should handle them equivalently. To translate into human language, it means define the equivalence partitions or equivalence classes that are synonyms. We know it still tells nothing to you, so let's check on our example. We don't have requirements, but based on the pop-up we can figure out that a person should be 18 years old at least to see the website content. Ok, it's enough to start testing. Each tester uses the equivalence partition technique in their own way. Somebody draws circles, some lines, others just write values. We like to draw the line. We like visualization. In our case, we can draw our birth date line or age line. And we think the age line is better in our case. You will see later why. The line starts at minus infinity and ends at infinity. And now we need to define an equivalence classes. As we said, we don't have the real requirements, but because we have a pop-up, you must be 18 years of age to use this website. We'll write it down as the first requirement. And based on that, we can put the first dot on the age line, 18 years old. So 18 years old or older can access the website. But if we take a closer look into the requirement, you must be 18 years of age. We can divide it into two separate requirements. 18 years old or older can access the website. 17 years old or younger can't access the website. We can have a debate if we need to consider days, as dots in our partitions, but for now it is not critical and we will leave the years division only. Based on this, we can put two dots, 18 years old and 17 years old. And now we have two equivalence partitions. The first one is from 18 years old included, till plus infinity. And the second one is from 17 years old, including till minus infinity. And this can't be right. We can't imagine that somebody is 1000 years old or 10 years old. Try to use the website. We need to find min and max values. How can we find those? There are plenty of ways. You can ask someone, like the product owner. You can learn the system limits by yourself. It is possible there is no limit at all. Again, we'll go with a simple way in this example. We'll find out by ourselves. So, if we expand the year drop-down, we can see that the newest year we can select is 2023 and the latest year is 1900. These are our min and max values, and we can put those on our age line. First of all, let's write down the requirements. The min date value is 2023. The max date value is 1900. All these we found by the system usage. On the real project, we suggest to talk with a responsible person like the product owner. But not in this example. We'll take what we can see as the requirements and put these two values on the age line. Min value is 0, max value is 123. And now we need to update the equivalence classes. The first one is from 18 years old to 123 years old, people who are allowed to use the website. And the second class is from 0 years old to 17 years old people who are not allowed to use the website. I think you have a lot of questions, but we won't answer all of them in this video. The only question we'll answer is why we need these classes, and it leads us to the next steps of the equivalence partitioning technique. Let's check two more simple rules related to the technique. Step number two. An equivalence partition containing valid values is called a valid equivalence partition. In one condition, in a partition works, we assume all of the conditions in that partition will work. And step number three, an equivalence partition containing invalid values is called an invalid equivalence partition. 
If one of the conditions in a partition does not work, then we assume that none of the conditions in that partition will work. It was a long monologue, you can stop the video and read all of this one more time. But in simple words, this means that we need to define the valid and invalid equivalence classes. So let's do it. And in this kind of example, it is easy. We have only two partitions. One is valid people from 18 to 123 years old, and another is invalid people under 17 to 0 years old. And we bet you still have the same question. What does it give to us? To answer this, we need to check one more rule of using the equivalence partition technique, the last one which we'll discuss in this video. It sounds like this. To achieve 100% coverage with this technique, test cases must cover all identified partitions, including invalid partitions, by using a minimum of one value from each partition. Again, you can stop the video and read it one more time, but in simple words, it means that we need to run at least one test case per equivalence class. In our case, we need at least two test cases to sleep well. Let's say 20 years old for a valid partition and 16 years old for an invalid partition. Maybe it sounds not realistic that two test cases can test the functionality, but let me remind you where we were before. Without this technique, we can identify thousands of test cases, and we don't know how to prioritize those. The equivalence partition technique is incredibly useful. It helps us to select the most important test cases. Now we have only two tests, and still you can run more. You can select 20 other test cases from age range. But instead, select those randomly. It is better to learn more techniques, and we will do it in the next video. Let's summarize what we have learned today. Related to the equivalence partitioning technique, we learned the definition and a couple of rules. You can stop the video and read it one more time. And we want to highlight that we haven't discussed everything related to the technique. You can check more about it on the ISTQB website or in the ISO standards. For this video, we decided to show only the most simple example of using the technique. In the next videos, we are going to talk about other test design techniques. Hope to see you there. And that's our answer to the question, please explain the equivalence partitioning technique.